Welcome to Flying High, an eight-week vlog journaling my life as a ticketing and gate agent. One of the ways I afford to travel with a family of four is by working for an airline. So I thought it would be fun to bring you guys along on my ride home and share about my day. So don't be shy. If you already work for an airline, introduce yourself and say hi. If you might want to work for an airline, go ahead, hit me up with those questions. And if you're just a passenger and you just want to know more, you're in the right place. I'll answer those questions too. Welcome to week seven of Flying High. We are almost done. I can't believe it. Almost to the end. Um, this week, I thought it would be fun to talk about flight attendant um, rules on the aircraft. Are they stupid? What's, what's the deal? Why do I have to put my seat back up when it's only back an inch? Um, I used to wonder this, and since working for an airline, I know now. Um, the flight attendants are there mostly for your safety. They go to, I believe, six or eight weeks of training. And that's not to learn how to serve you juice or <laughs> a cocktail. They are there to keep you safe, first and foremost. And um, they don't like to tell you this stuff, probably because they don't want to scare passengers. So typically, um, turbulence, and I looked this up because I've been on some very turbulent aircraft and it scared the <laughs> out of me. And, um, I decided to face my fear and do a little bit of research and typically turbulence is not what brings an aircraft down. It might injure a passenger because they're not in their seatbelt, um, but it doesn't usually bring down an aircraft. Usually if you look at the history of crashes, they are either during takeoff or landing. So that is the most dangerous time and also during taxiing because there's other aircraft and they can't always see where they're coming from. That's why they have you keep that seatbelt on until you are at the gate and it's parked. Um, so if during takeoff and landing are the most dangerous times to be on an aircraft, that's when they wanna make sure if anything were to go wrong. Um, typically they say, well, I had a friend um, here a year or two ago and he said they were on the aircraft and the captain came on the PA and said that he didn't know if the landing gear had come down properly. It was like he put it down but the light wasn't indicating. I, I'm assuming it's a light, I don't know. I'm, I'm telling you this guy's story. He said it wasn't indicating that it had come down so the captain wasn't sure if it did or not. So they had called and fire trucks were waiting on the runway um, but they didn't know how this landing would go. So basically, if something um, were to happen on, a, on the runway, um, I've been told that the goal is to have everybody off that aircraft in 90 seconds. So when you're thinking about how many people are on an aircraft, and 90 seconds is not a lot of time, then all of a sudden it makes a lot more sense why an inch would make such a big difference, why all of the baggage being stowed and out of the way would save seconds, all those tray tables up. So if everything goes as planned, every, everybody's cooperated and everybody's listened, all aircraft should be able to be evacuated within that 90 seconds, I believe. Um, so that is why <laughs> they're asking you to do that. It's not because they're on some power trip or because they want you to do their work for them. It's because in the rare, 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 rare chance that anything went wrong, they wanna make sure everybody can get off of there. Um, I don't know what the deal is with the airplane mode anymore. Um, maybe I will ask because that one still seems a little strange to me. But I do know that the captain has the final say on who's on that aircraft. Even if you have, a, have bought a ticket, he can say you're not going. If you're being insubordinate, if you are disobeying the flight attendant, if you are speaking poorly to a gate agent, cussing them out. Um, we had a captain in the other week and he was telling us the story about this elite member and um, he was cussing this gate agent out and he was watching and he looked at the guy and he said you're not going to be riding with us today on this aircraft and I got so mad they rebooked him from for later um, but that captain has the final say on who's on his plane and if you are going to give a bunch of grief before you're even in the air he doesn't want to take you in the air that's a liability and he's responsible so that's how that works so just be polite, be respectful, <laughs> life will be good. And they're there for your help and your safety and that's what that's all about. 
Okay guys, so I did get a chance today to ask one of the flight attendants about the airplane mode thing and he said that basically it interferes with the captain's headset. So it's not gonna bring the plane down or anything, but it is um, a distraction for the pilot. And he said the closer you are to the front, the worse it is, and the more people that leave theirs on, the worse it is. So um, it's just better to put your phone into airplane mode. Also, he did say that um, in addition to that, if you don't put your phone in airplane mode, it drains your phone's battery. So just another bonus for you to do what they ask you to. And I think that covers it. Um, if you guys have any more questions about flight attendant rules and regulations, uh, just post them below. Or if you know more about it than I do, <laughs> definitely leave that below. I'm sure everybody would love to hear from you. So I came down to set up the jet bridge and make sure it was at the right height and we had all our wheelchairs. And there is one, two, three, seven U.S. Navy planes getting ready to take off. So that's pretty fun.